This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 12th day of September in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. Confirming that the People's National Congress Reform Biennial Delegates Congress will take place next year, party leader Aubrey Norton today expressed confidence that he will be re-elected leader of the party and ultimately become the presidential candidate for the APNU in the 2025 elections. No presidential candidate. I will be the presidential candidate. Whenever the Congress is held, I am 99.9% .9 sure that I have the support of our party. In an interview with News Source, Mr. Norton said he has used his time in office to rebuild the party and connect with the grassroots members of the PNC reform, who, according to him, will not allow inexperience to lead the party. But he has also been accused of sidelining senior members of the party's executive, especially those who appear to be gearing up to challenge his leadership. The history of this party has been the party leader is the presidential candidate. We will have elections and I'll be re-elected and I will be the presidential candidate. As to support, I've outlined to you, I do have the support of the party at the base and the base is critical. According to Mr. Norton, under his leadership, the PNC reform has facilitated a number of development training programs for its members and has since developed an investment plan for the use of its lands to rake in much needed funds. He said as a party leader, he has also been engaging more with the international community on behalf of the party. But his term in office has not been without issues. Some executive members have accused Norton of using the Central Executive Committee as a rubber stamp while making unilateral decisions. He said he can never be accused of corruption and has been leading the party well. You know, when people cannot accuse you of corruption, when they can't accuse you of not having intellect, when they can't accuse you of incompetence, they have to fabricate and find things. While Norton today confirmed that the Delegates Congress will be held next year, he did not provide any timeline. The General Council of the party, which has not met in over a year, is expected to make the final decision. The party's constitution mandates that the Biennial Delegates Congress be held biennially to facilitate the election of new leadership. The last Congress was held in December of 2021 when Norton was elected to the party's top spot. More news coming up in just a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Oh my lord. I just love to shop in this store. My customers, them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. Household items, electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's deal on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one. For you. Busta, bust the flavor, flavors. We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors. Bust the flavors that my crave for. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors. Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors. Yeah, thirst buster. Grab a busta. Bust the flavor, taste the savor. Busta, bust the flavor, flavors. Busta, bust the flavor, flavors. Solid, in countries far and wide, you India, Russia.
for us, we're standing by your side. Golden service, half a century and more. New India assurance, our policies are secure. From the heart of India, we serve these islands. The strength that you can trust, you're safe when you come to us. New India Assurance Company, assurance when you need it most. For your home, motor or business insurance, visit New India Guyana office, 58 Brigdam next to Star Computers. Telephone 2260-4157. Comfortable parking available. Welcome back. Turning now to the world of business and finance, gold declarations, especially from small and medium-scale miners, continue to decline even after several interventions by the authorities. Last month, again, a gold and diamond miners association raised an alarm over the issue, saying that the industry has been hit by a labor shortage driven by the demand for labor in the construction and oil and gas sectors. Both the government and the Miners Association in recent times have raised concern about illegal mining operations, which also robbed the state of revenue and has been negatively impacting gold declarations. In its half-year report, the Ministry of Finance highlighted the drop in gold declarations. The ministry said the gold mining subsector suffered a decline in the first half of the year, contracting by more than 11% due to lower declarations from the small and medium-scale miners. By the end of June, gold declarations stood at 209,756 ounces, compared to 236,728 ounces during the same period the previous year. According to the report, the gold declarations from a single large-scale producer expanded by 6.1% year-on-year, but that was outweighed by lower declarations from the small and medium-scale producers. Declarations from the small and medium-scale producers fell from over 188,000 ounces in the first half of last year to 159,084 ounces at the end of June this year. However, the Ministry of Finance said that due to strengthened enforcement efforts, and other interventions, the gold mining subsector is now projected to grow by 5.3% by the end of this year. On the other hand, the ministry noted that the other mining and quarrying subsectors comprising sand, stone, diamonds and manganese have expanded by more than 45%. Sand and stone declarations are estimated to have grown by 52.6% and 71.7% largely supported by the construction industry. On the downside, diamond declarations fell by more than 21% in the first half of this year. Still with finance matters, on the heels of the Finance Ministry's mid-year report, which boasted of Ghana's economic prospects, an International Monetary Fund mission has also found that the country's economic growth rate remains one of the fastest in the world. In its report, the IMF mission said on the back of a 62.3% growth rate last year, real GDP is expected to continue to grow extremely fast this year, reaching 38%. The IMF has attributed the growth to the country's growing oil and gas sector. According to the international body, oil production is ramping up with the coming on stream of a third oil field and growth in the non-oil sector is supported by the implementation of a fast-paced public investment program focused on providing transportation, housing and flood management infrastructure and raising human capital. It says pillowers from oil and construction are supporting growth in the services and supply sectors, while agriculture, mining and quarrying are also performing well. After a strong 2022 in the first half of 2023, real non-oil GDP grew by 12.3%, the IMF report noted. Additionally, the international body noted that with rapid oil production continuing offshore Guyana and with three approved oil fields to come on stream between 2024 and 2028, sustained real non-oil GDP growth of 5.5% is projected. The report said Guyana's favorable medium-term growth prospects are accompanied by upside and downside risk. On the upside, further oil discoveries will continue to improve growth prospects. Construction growth and strong public investment 
may support higher than expected short-term non-oil growth, but could also lead to inflationary pressures and the appreciation of the real exchange rate between the level implied by a balanced expansion of the economy, overheating, and the crowding out of credit to the private sector. The mission also found that although there was growth in unemployment in the oil and gas services and construction sectors, the unemployment rate stood at 12.4%, with an estimated negative output gap. Further, the IMF team projects that the country's public sector debt will gradually decline after declines of 26% last year from 43.2%. The team also estimated that the real exchange rate is expected to appreciate. Have you ever received a phone call from someone sounding like this? You need to let me know if you think you are verbal having 250 US dollars to get your tax advance clear. Tax advance? Or maybe you were approached by a stranger who offered to help you with a transaction at the GRA for a small fee, of course. Don't worry about that. Just give me the documents. It's 20,000 and I give you a compliance. Well, if ever you encountered one or both of these two situations and you gave in, then you were the victim of a fraudster. Here's what to do if you suspect that someone is trying to scam you in the name of the GRA. Firstly, all payments must be made to the GRA's cashier. And please note, an official receipt will be accompanied by all payments. It therefore means that no one should collect money from you on behalf of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Alternatively, taxpayers can utilize GRA's online digital payment options at banking institutions such as GBTI Republic Bank and Demerara Bank or GTT's Mobile Money. That's right, payment with just the click of a button. Done. If you encounter a scammer or you suspect a scam, then you should request the name and ID of the person posing as a GRA representative since all staff of the GRA are required to carry identification cards while executing their duties. Report suspected scammers or imposters to the GRA's Special Investigation Unit by calling its hotline 225-5051 or you can send an email to siu at gra.gov.gy. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's still on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. In the field of education, the Ministry of Education is currently drafting a policy to address the worrying issue of violence in the country's schools. On the sidelines of an event yesterday, the Education Minister Priya Manak Chande explained that at the time of his death, Education Advisor Dr. Olato Sam was drafting a policy. She said the work will continue. He was uh, coming up with a holistic plan about not only the immediate issue of violence, but how do we prevent, how do we make sure we identify children who might be a little bit more vulnerable to both performing acts of violence and being on the receiving end of violence. So a very holistic plan. Manik Chan also explained that the matter is one that is being examined closely. We didn't have anyone on the study and we tried to put together what we can with what he has presented so far and try to work from there. Last year, the Education Ministry, with support from the Ministry of Home Affairs, had calls to step up security at a number of city schools over a number of violent incidents. Teachers also complained about the issue and threats being hurled at them by students. The Education Ministry has maintained its zero-tolerance policy against violence in the country's schools. Well, with President Irfan Ali maintaining that there are persons performing the functions of the Chancellor and Chief Justice while dodging questions on the substantive appointments, Opposition Leader Aubrey Norton today said he is convinced that the President has shut the door on confirming Justice Unit Cummings as the Chancellor and Justice Roxanne George as the Chief Justice. 
The two legal women have been acting in the position since 2017, and although the opposition leader has offered his full support to their confirmations, the president has not budged on the issue. Speaking to news source today, Mr. Norton said after he initially offered his full support for the two judges to be confirmed to the top judicial post, the president and the government turned away from the issue. If I wrote, write, I wrote you a formal letter saying this consultation is due, I am prepared to agree to these two people. And your response is, it is not within the purview of the opposition leader to suggest, and I think I sent you the documentation to that effect, so you would have seen it. It means that the president himself has said, look, don't engage me unless I engage you. So for him to now come and say, I could up the phone and call him, he's being disingenuous and ridiculous. Under the Constitution of Ghana, there must be agreement between the president and the opposition leader on the appointment of a chancellor and the chief justice. President Ali last Saturday said he had eight formal communications with the opposition leader on various constitutional issues and appointments. Mr. Norton said those exchanges were in the form of letters and there were no meaningful consultations as mandated by the country's constitution. Meaningful consultation for me has to mean that, look, one, this information is provided. Two, background checks are done. Especially for political affiliation. Because a democratic society assumes that independence means independence. If the Teacher Service Commission is going to be independent, tell me how could you have a PPP activist from Linden on that commission? Tell me how is it the chairman of this commission is operating out of the office of the president. Norton also told news source that notwithstanding the government's posture towards the opposition, he is still prepared to sit down with the president to discuss issues of national importance. It is not my intention to meet the president just for the sake of meeting. It has to discuss the critical issues. And so I'm prepared to meet Ethnic discrimination is a serious issue in this country. He makes a lot of noise about the shaking of the hands. But the issues that led to that have got to be resolved. I am not prepared just to engage for the sake of engaging. The opposition leader said a large part of the population has been marginalized and victimized and that too must be addressed. We have a situation in this country where PPP operatives are walking around with state funds, millions of dollars, and distributing it to achieve political ends, in which there'll be no proper paper trail. And therefore, the president and his government, by the very nature of the operation, they are encouraging corruption. So any serious discussion has to deal with corruption. It has to deal with how you utilize the resources from oil and gas in this country. According to Mr. Norton, the government has been abusing its powers from the executive to the National Assembly. He said the government still has time to get it right. Perica construction worker Randall Fries was charged and remanded to jail yesterday in relation to the gruesome murder of Perica resident Shanin Mohammed. The woman's remains were found burned beyond recognition in a yard where her house was being built by the same man who has now been charged for her murder. In court, the accused was not required to enter a plea to the indictable murder charge and has been ordered to return to court on the 13th of November for the continuation of the case. The 45-year-old accused was arrested after he was identified by the dead woman's family and other persons as the last person to be seen with her. The woman reportedly visited the site of her home construction to meet with Reese. Her family became concerned when she did not return home. When they visited the scene, they noticed a large fire burning and the skull and all remains of the woman in the fire as the man hurried away from the area. The suspect was also caught on a neighbor's camera setting fire the same evening.
Bio-Oil Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Sorry! Jack? Hey! Boys, where are you going with all that speed? Yo, know, today's the 15th, my NAS contributions are due, and I ain't even get the farms as yet. Hold on. You mean to tell me that you're not aware that all self-employed persons can now make their NIS contributions using the MMG app from the comforts of their homes and offices? Really? And you know, I just pay my bills using MMG, you know? Yes, Jack. And the thing's simple. All you have to do is open the app, select pay bills, government services, NIS, and pay. They will prompt you to enter your NIS number, the month you're paying for, and the amount. So, I don't need to submit any form? The only time you submit in a farm is when you're making a claim. Wait, wait, I could make a claim too? Oh, no, man, you didn't know that? <laughs> yes, all self-employed persons are entitled to all benefits from NIS. Well, except for the industrial benefits. And here's the good part. All of their farms, you can download them from the NIS website. Well, girl, I'm really glad I bumped into you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, make sure you pay your bills later. Later? I gotta sit down right here and pay my contributions right. first. Take care. For further information, please visit the website at www.nis.org.gy, the National Insurance Scheme Facebook page, or your nearest NIS office. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken, and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new Buster Soda Water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Buster Soda Water today. Buster Soda Water, now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Swetlana Marshall in the region. Reuters in a report said the prime ministers of two small island nations that face ongoing impacts from rising sea levels appeared at legal hearings at an international court in Germany on Monday and are seeking an advisory opinion on the obligations of countries to combat climate change. Prime Ministers Cassia Natanu of Tuvalu and Gaston Brung of Antigua and Barbuda give evidence at the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, which will consider whether carbon emissions observed by the ocean should be considered marine pollution and what obligations nations have to protect the marine environment. In addition to the small island states, countries including Germany, France, Saudi Arabia and Australia will speak at hearing sessions scheduled until September 25. The tribunal will then issue an advisory opinion, which is not legally binding, but offers an authoritative statement on legal matters that could guide countries as they craft climate protection law. Clarification has been given for Caribbean nationals regarding the United Kingdom's Electronic Travel Authorization ETA. UK in Caribbean, the official Twitter channel of some British diplomatic missions in the Caribbean, posted on Monday that Caribbean nationals do not require an ETA for travel to the UK at this time. It stated ETA requirement for nationals of Caribbean countries and most of the world will begin in 2024 on dates that are to be announced 
later. It will broadly be for visitors who do not need a visa for short stay to the UK or who do not already have UK immigration status prior to traveling. UK in Caribbean says it will provide further updates as these become available. According to information on the UK visas and immigration, an electronic travel authorization ETA will soon be a requirement for people who do not need a visa to visit the UK. It will give you permission to travel to the UK and it will be electronically linked to the passport. And finally tonight, international news. More than 2,000 people are reported dead in Libya after a storm triggered devastating floods, BBC said in a report. Much of Darna, a city home to 100,000 people, is on the water after two dams and four bridges collapsed. The death toll from the city alone stands at more than 1,500, according to a minister. At least 10,000 people are missing, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society says. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.